our webinar, Design of Load-Bearing Tall Wood Studs for Wind and Gravity Loads. And you've seen the description and the learning objectives, so in the interest of time, I won't spend any additional time working through those. Um, but these are the, the objectives for today, and uh, hopefully we'll get those uh, covered for you. Uh, as Maria mentioned, I'm with the International Code Council, located in Leesburg, Virginia, and there's my contact information if you have follow-up uh, questions about anything that we cover today. I'm glad to try and, and help out. So as a, an agenda for our webinar, uh, first thing that we'll do is look at some of the reference materials that will make up our, our design example for today, the codes and standards and other documents associated with this design example. And then as we jump into the tall wall wood stud example, we'll talk about some of the assumptions that go into not only wood design, but to the, the assumptions for how uh, we apply loads to these structures. And we'll look at the loads, the wind loads, and the gravity loads, and the load combinations. And then after we have all of that uh, done, then we'll uh, pull together the results in, in, our, in our stud design. So that's how we'll approach this. As Maria mentioned, we'll have some breaks along the way and some time for uh, Q&A. Uh, at the moment, I'm not seeing the Q&A, and, and that's on purpose just to allow me to focus in on, on these slides. And then when we get to, to the Q&A session, uh, Maria will, um, will I'll, I'll be taking a look at those, and, and we'll take some Q&A at each of those 10-minute breaks. So first, uh, one of our reference materials is a document that is co-branded by the American Wood Council and ICC called Structural Wood Design Examples. And this particular tall wall wood stud example is one of 23 that are incorporated in this document. Uh, this document covers a broad range of topics from wood members to connections and shear walls. And so this is one of 23, it happens to be the, the most detailed and, and the longest of the examples in the book, which is why we can <laughs> devote an entire webinar to it. But it's available in print uh, or PDF, and I believe uh, at the AWC website you can even get a view-only copy of this document. The reason uh, that there is a date that includes both the 2015 and 2018 uh, codes and standards is that uh, with a few exceptions, all these example problems are backward compatible to 2015 uh, versions of the, of the standards, whether we're talking about the NDS or wood frame construction manual. And the codes and standards including ASCE 7. So even back to ASCE 710, what we'll be covering today um, does not change significantly except for a few section numbers from ASCE 710. If you're interested in an executive summary in Structure Magazine back in December of 2018, I co-authored an article on this topic with Brad Douglas, who's with the American Wood Council, and um, David Lowe, who's a consultant who does uh, a lot of work for FEMA and has done some consulting for the American Wood Council as well. And so this is a pretty brief, th this paper that we wrote is a pretty brief two-page um, overview of the assumptions and results that, uh, again, kind of give you a, a nice condensed executive summary if that's something you're looking for as a reminder. But today we'll get into a little more of the nitty-gritty 
uh, of the example problem uh, since we have time to do that. So the governing codes um, for what we'll be covering today are the 2018 International Building Code and the 2018 International Residential Code. And we'll be drawing some specific provisions from those. Uh, there's some deflection criteria that we'll be talking through and all the standards that are referenced that we'll be talking about are referenced in these two model codes. 